I don't usually make a lot of videos, so this video I'm making just to show a down and dirty way to create backgrounds that I use using some of my own brushes that I've created. Um, the first thing that I will do is open a new canvas and it's 4000 by 4000 with a 250 DPI and it doesn't matter that it's white because the first thing I'm going to do is place an image that I happen to like the colors on that maybe go well with um, the action scene or the um, pet scene. I do a lot of painting of horses and horses in action and dogs and a few cats. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure it covers the whole edges. Um, with my brushes I don't like to drag in that white in case there's a little left at the edge of the canvas and my brushes will do that so you want to make sure it's completely covered and then I drop it and so you can see the canvas now has this and you'll notice it's very pixelated so what I do then is I clone it and I will minimize the clone and sh close the original and I don't save it because I can start that anytime with any background so I don't waste space with that then I make this fit my screen and I use my first what I call my base brush and it's actually an oil brush that I've set all the defaults to um, just sort of blend and bring in those colors that I'm liking their placement and the um, tones um, that I'm going to use for this background. So um, usually I start this on a whole nother layer. So let's just go back and I will undo my strokes. Just forgetting I'm not a professional um, video maker. So I will put a new layer above and it isn't going to matter that I didn't do that and I didn't erase all my brushes. It's picking up those colors from the original clone. So you can just watch as I blend out. And the thing is, I will often shut down the canvas so that I can see Sorry, had to stop and get a drink of tea for my dry throat. So you can see it's picking up those colors, but the important thing is this brush needs to cover every bit of the canvas so that you don't have any of those digital marks left on your painting. <coughs> Excuse my cough. So now I've got the canvas almost completely covered. And you can see almost all of these little digital square marks are gone off the canvas. So now I know I've pretty much removed any digital look to it. And now I'll add a new layer. I work on layers and I'll, you'll see as I go on the reason for that. So I'm going to take my next brush and add a little bit more of a stronger, this brush is still an oil brush that's set with a lot of random um, angles and, and uh, it's a pressure sensitive brush so if you do it small you get just little but if you press hard you get a bigger stroke. So I like to go through around the edges first and cover up so that I get a little more definition to that oil stroke. And this is kind of a cloudy um, stroke as you can see by the... I save dabs all the time in Painter 2023 from brushes that I've liked but I always end up making changes to them to um, 
the angle and the spacing and the stroke and um, the smoothing. So I'm getting a very different one than the original stroke was that I saved. I will leave it lots of times sort of in the center a little bit more blurry so that when you paint your portrait over that you have edges that are easier to blend in. So you can see by this now we've started out with this totally smooth and now we've got a little more paint added. So I will add a new layer and each step that I'm taking in my type of stroke and my dabs, I, I save my dabs on a palette, as you can see, the ones that I like. And I'll add them to a different brush, still using ran, a lot of random settings and differences in color variability, the hue and the saturation and uh, the value. And I will change those up. And and now a third layer with a different stroke is being added to that and that's giving me some depth that makes it look like I really did paint on my canvas in a in a, in a uh, natural painting setting with oils and then went over it with a different brush and a different stroke. It gives you a little of that depth and of course over here under your layers you can change the default look to that layer which sometimes I will go down and change it to luminosity and then rather than have it high luminosity I might lower it or if I'm doing it as an overlay you can see that doing layers if you don't cover it completely it'll leave these edges but if you lower the opacity of that layer it can blend in and you still get this stroke of this type of brush but it doesn't necessarily make that stand out so strongly as something different but you can see here with just changing that canvas with three different layers I'm getting a whole lot of different depth and uh, color variations and values on each layer so that gives you a really good start to work with um, you just have to develop brushes that you really appreciate and if you like this more of a classic style look to it you could drop all these layers and save it right there and that would be your canvas but now if you want to go to something more impressionistic I would just add a new layer and go above that and with my next brush I call it soft impression and it's a totally different stroke with all kinds of different settings and if I put it as an overlay let's go over here and change it to an overlay and see what happens with this stroke it brings in you can um, of course change your opacity and make it down but you can see what it's doing it's adding a very um, bright so on opacity almost always I will take that down to about 50% or less and then I get that color brought in with this brush and I get um, and I can place that where I want it or I could cover that whole canvas this way I can lower it more till I blend it in a little more now you can see those colors coming out so um, this is a very fun way to just brighten some of those colors around what you're working with and if it still looks too broken to you you can always go back with blenders or you can drop your opacity again on the overlay which I have set to overlay but you know anytime you can play with those also and change them to multiply or you can change them to um, we'll go back to the luminosity you see what difference I've never changed that um, 21 percent but by putting it on different um, choices on on the um, oh gosh now I just blanked out on what it's called but you'll know um, I can change that to where I'm getting a totally different effect but let's say I'm liking this one I set on colorize but I still don't like this breakup so later I'm 
I might go in there with a random type blender and smooth that out. I can um, stretch this. Yeah, I'm having a little delay here because I've got the video running. But I can stretch this back out and get more color and might have to go back in here and blend between layers. But I hope you see what I'm doing. And if I said that I liked this this way, I've got many more brushes that um, I have created that I play with and I always use a different layer with a different brush because then I can change the opacity from default to overlay or to um, soft light or you know um, find the one that I'm thinking is working best with that. And at any time with any brush you can always go over and apply a dab stencil. So say, I'm going to move my catchers, capture dabs, but say I want to apply a texture to this particular brush and pick out a texture that I'm liking. Um, I can pick out one that um, has a very strong, like if I show you this texture, it has a very strong ability that it will pull out these dark and light areas. So if I use that one with this brush, I'm going to get a different feel to this background. So hopefully this is showing you how to break them up, make them more impressionistic, give them different color depths by using different layers with different settings here. Then Let's say I liked this one because I'd broken up that edge and I'd changed it and I'm going to drop this down just a little so it's still broken up. And say I'm liking this one the way it is. I wanted some bright colors over here because the light's going to be coming from this way. So now I would drop all those layers and then I can play around with adjusting colors. And by adjusting colors I'll reset it to begin with. Now this is what I've got by dropping them all, but I can move that saturation up and have it so much brighter that it about knocks your socks off and change the value down and have it darken with those bright layers. Or I can change the hue shift and make it go more towards the rosy. And when I'm using this one, honestly, I only change them about 1% at a time because you get so much strength and difference in variations. So, uh, getting a call, hang on just a sec. Anyway, I'm not gonna do that, so I'm going to say I'm going to save it this way. And I can always also go in and use my brightness and contrast. I'll reset it to the beginning, and you can change it completely by brightening it, darkening it, adding more contrast, lowering the contrast. So all of these are totally up to how you want to change your background and have it turn out. The last thing I will do is um, I might apply some lighting. Don't always do this, but let's say I want to add a warm globe and aim it in the direction of where those that light is coming from. So now I've got this effect on it. So if I say, OK, you can see it's lighter here and darker down here. So then you can go back to your brightness and contrast and change it again and add more contrast and say, OK, now I'm going to save my background. So basically, this is a down and dirty quick of how I do it. And um, by using these are all my brushes that and I always set up an experimental one that I can. I'll show you with the experimental. Say I like this brush I've set it up it's it's the same one I was using for my background impressionistic wave and say I have changed it by normally it has this um, by doing this and having an experimental brush then you don't lose this original impressionistic brush you can play with dabs and say Okay, I want to try um, 
this dab on it. Well, this dab looks like cloudiness. So I've completely used the same random, same settings over here under my general brush controls. But now that brush reacts cloudy instead of the way it did at the beginning, which was this. So I love having dabs and being able to switch on the fly. So this is how I do it, and I hope um, this will give you something to play with and um, just have fun creating your backgrounds.